is you first find pictures of a road that are we have that have no cars in them, and then you find the active uh, pictures with cars on them. So conceptually, the idea I'll explain this further. Conceptually, this is actually a pretty simple thing. As you can see here, image subtraction is what is the basis of all of this. Take an image of all the road, as you can see here, all the signs, all the cars, all the sorry, all the street lights, and you take an image with uh, cars in them. You subtract the two images. As I told you, they're all matrices, so you can subtract quite simply, and you'll get whatever is the difference. The one thing you have to keep in mind is that there are going to obviously be differences apart from cars. Pedestrians can differ. You can have lighting differ, which is one of the main issues we face. But because you're doing subtraction, what you're, it's just simple subtraction. The larger the difference, the bigger the actual difference in real life. So based on that, you can do thresholding and find the actual big differences. If there is a lighting change, it's going to be a small difference, and so you can threshold it out. And what you can then do is create, turn it into a binary image. One is all the differences in the image, and zero is all the parts that are same. And as you can see here, so we are trying to create this extremely pretty high resolution, lots of frames per second, there's color. We're trying to take this image and get, make it as simple as possible. And now with a couple comparatively easy steps, we just have a binary image that can be further processed. So there are a couple problems with this. So just plain image subtraction isn't going to solve your problem. You're going to have, as I said earlier, pedestrians and cars. And image subtraction is not a perfect thing. You're not going to have perfectly shaped cars. Things are going to look, they're called blobs. They're going to have um, shapes in them. They might be actually holes in what you get. So then you need to uh, use further algorithms. You need to use uh, for more algorithms to make the image as clean as possible. And these set of algorithms are called morphology. And they're a set of functions specifically for, they can be specifically used for blob detection. So the first thing you can run is something called a dilation. So what this allows you to do is take the bigger, the bigger the object, the bigger it's gonna get. So a pedestrian or a small object won't really increase in size much, whereas a car will increase much more. So this way you're kind of, you are amplifying the big things. Then you then immediately run the flip side, you erode. What that allows you to do is take the small objects and reduce them a lot, and take the big objects and reduce them some. And by carefully running these two algorithms, you can uh, el eliminate a lot of the noise and retain only the important elements. Then you actually, it's a quite simple name, you remove. And this uses something called the grass fire algorithm. And the main idea of the grass fire, grass fire algorithm is you set a fire in a field, you set a fire here, and the fire will spread to every point that is connected. So if you have, uh, if, so if you start the fire right there, it'll expand all the way through this car, and then it'll stop. And that way, you, that's a way, this allows you to mark each, in each individual object. And that way, now what we have is, we have e every car on the road mapped out, and you can actually see in this picture, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one right there, and then you can see these three right here. But you might also point out that we have a couple parked cars, and both of them are also appearing here. So what we've now done is basically marked every car, and we have removed, we have pretty much only cars located. But this is, we're getting pretty close to the maximum extent of image processing. Past this, it's gonna take some, you need to do intelligent uh, filtering. So then we move on to blob analysis. And like I said earlier, you use the label function and the grass bar algorithm to basically find each of these different objects. And this is a way of basically you can classify each of the different cars as uh, different uh, individual entities. So then, uh, without too much wor uh, work, you can find the center point of each of these cars. And then uh, using this, while you're doing this, you can basically uh, get rid of all the objects that are too small to be a car, or you can actually get rid of cars that are too far away. The farther away, obviously, they're gonna be smaller. And if you're able to remove cars that are far away, then you don't have any risk of, if they're far away and you don't have, as you can't see them well, there's no risk of a misdetection if you just throw them out. So now we get into machine learning. And machine learning is also a, a fundamentally, it's not too difficult of a concept. 
you take you give an algorithm a set of data that's been processed by either people or other reliable sources and you tell it this is a pattern this is a set of data identify the pattern and then take this pattern it can take that pattern and apply it so what you can do is supervise this is called supervised learning so what you first do is you give it a bunch of data points so this is all the cars that have driven over this road uh, for a week and these are their positions so you can basically find what is a normal person drive like and then you can also because uh, we're now past image processing uh, this is software we can also tell it if everyone stops assume it's a red light ignore it or if everyone seems to be uh, so you can do things like that and if everyone seems to be going slow get rid of it if you see really weird lighting or um, anomalous traffic patterns and accident happens all these things can be thrown out and you can see a picture here this is a guy who's driving drunk so it's comparatively easy to find this guy if most people's center points are here, he's all the way over here. So it's pretty easy to find someone who's drunk. So then while you're applying the algorithm, what do you do? So you have a police station running this uh, algorithm, and you basically find every car that's on the road, you find its center point, and you figure out its track. And if you see some weird scenarios, such as high traffic, and it's it's less, it's more difficult to catch someone in high traffic if you should just stop start, whereas if they're going fast, you can see the swerve. So then you can, there's two things you can do. You can first see, how is this guy driving versus everyone else that's ever driven here? And that's gonna usually throw a flag. If, if everyone on this road has always driven straight and someone's drunk is driving curve, it's pretty easy to say this guy's driving different from everyone. But that's not enough. So what happens if there's a duck on the road or if there's anything like, uh, if there's anything on the road, well then, you're, are you gonna flag everyone as drunk? What you then do is you do active comparative analysis. You compare the guy who's currently driving to how everyone around him is driving. And if he passes both the flags, that means if he, both are flagged, then you know that this guy is doing something different from everyone else that's ever driven on the road. And then you send it to the police officer saying, we are pretty sure this guy is, whether or not he's drunk, there may have been an accident that happened, but something he's doing is different. So that's where we're at in terms of software, oh, hardware. Now I have a self-built desktop at home and it is quite powerful, but it is still very difficult. All those steps I just told you have to be run in less than 1 30th of a second because that's the speed 30 FPS is the speed at which frames are coming in. So you need to build a supercomputer. And this is a word that's used for a lot of things and has like almost a lot of stigma associated to it. But fundamentally, it's actually a pretty easy concept. Take a lot of these units, you can see each of these, they're called a Raspberry Pi, each is about 30 bucks. And only at, you can see it's small size, it's about 30 bucks, that big. It has every, almost every component of a fully functioning computer. So if you network together, I have not built this, this is from somewhere, but you can see if you network a lot of them together, you can actually cheaply put together a machine that, for the same price, if I said you can go to Best Buy and buy something for $2,000, versus putting $2,000 worth of these together, this will be much more uh, powerful. You can also, this offers scalability. If you have New York and all their traffic cameras, you can just increase the number of Raspberry Pis versus Dayton in which you can reduce. And this has, it runs a pretty standard Linux and so it's pretty easy. Okay, so it's pretty easy to use. So now I wanna talk about the future plans and why I believe this can actually be turned into a business. So the current product, we, uh, what I've currently written throughout the summer uh, at the uh, Discovery Lab, if you give me traffic camera footage, I can return what is the historical track? What should people be driving like? But the problem is, first thing, it's pretty slow. It takes almost a second to a second, to, uh, about one to 1.5 seconds for every frame. And if you think about 30 frames are coming in for a second, you'll quickly get backlogged. But what I'm actually working on right now is active comparison. And so you can see, are people right now um, drunk or not drunk? But the thing about this is everything I've told you about so far has a cost of zero dollars, apart obviously the Raspberry Pi system, but it is a very cheap system. And with the amount of money we pour into PSAs and other things to end drunk driving, this is a much better way to spend the cost. Why? Because we already have traffic cameras everywhere. And actually creating the system to take advantage of that is gonna have a lot of gain for not much cost. And a political will exists for drunk driving to end. 
So funding is not a, as big of an issue. And so I fundamentally believe that this is something that we need to do because it's those numbers are 10.4 million drunk drivers every year. And that is, that's too big of a number, especially with all the technology. Everything I told, told you in that presentation, you could Google all that information. So thank you so much for your time. Do you have any questions? Did you say you are 11th grader? Yes. What do you plan to do when you are 12th grader? <laughs> and, and do you want to come and teach at Africa? <laughs> I'll need to talk to you later. Very good job. Yes. Uh, it's, it's not a question, it's basically a comment. Uh, excellent work. Uh, so, Grand driving is a big issue, you know. So, are you thinking about texting and driving? That is a new trend, it seems. Yeah. So, all the, the statistics about drunk, distracted driving are texting and driving. So, what happens in, unless, like, a grand and driven, where you can see all these yeah. uh, uh, different behaviors? Because of texting, most of the time, they just take it in first control. You, you don't see any difference in their driving pattern. But their eyes are not on the road. Yeah, so uh, distracted driving, yes, you are. I mean, it, it is harder to find distracted driving. But one flag with distracted driving is not necessarily the swerving as much if you're on a straight road, but their speed will keep changing. It, yes, with the cruise control, that is, uh, that, that is something people can do, and it's pretty hard to detect that. But a lot of times, their speed will keep changing. And with this system, you can kind of track how fast should people, people be going. And drunk drivers are actually it's in a weird way, they're actually very safe drivers. And let me explain that. Since they are not at all confident about what they're doing, they usually are going much slower. And so that is a flag for us, but because they're not confident, sometimes they can actually keep themselves safer than normal. But yeah, that is a flag. Anyone else have questions? Yeah, that's what I do when I drink, I put a fluid in the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you beat me on the side. <laughs> Thank you.